Hello and welcome to Ravenwing Flutes. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the flutes and uh, we're going to have our first lesson on how to play the Native American flute. A um, couple of things that I need to bring to your attention first. Uh, if we can zoom in on the, this area of the flute right here, you'll have two basic types of Native American flutes. Some will have this little brass piece on top between the totem and the flute and some of them won't. This is, uh, this is called a woodland flute. Uh, this is uh, uh, usually originated in the eastern woodland areas of the United States. This is called the plains flute and as you can see uh, the sound is created, if we can zoom in, the sound is created by the air blowing across this little bevel right here on this one. Also some flutes will have six holes some flutes will have five holes and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute uh, basically uh, nowadays most flutes are tuned the same way uh, they're tuned in a pentatonic scale um, and we'll talk about that as well so let me set this down and we're gonna start with a five hole flute a um, couple of things that you need to know about uh, the native flute. First of all, the embouchure right here uh, is very, very simple. You, there's nothing, no need to learn to do anything with your lips in order to create a sound. All you need to do is put your lips on it and blow gently and you'll get a sound. So, the first thing is going to be how to, how to put the flute to your lips. This piece right here, the mouthpiece, is never supposed to go into your mouth. I uh, see a lot of people when they first start, uh, they just stick with that right past their lips and you're going to end up with uh, a mouthpiece that eventually uh, soaks in all the moisture and gets ruined. So the best way to do this is basically, and you get used to this and you only need to do it a couple of times to realize what I'm talking about, is you put the lip, the uh, embouchure, on your bottom lip and then you move the, the flute up just like this okay this never goes in my mouth alright so how to create the sound basically this piece on here and uh, I will show you on this flute if we can again zoom in the, the way that the flute is constructed it is it's constructed in there are two chambers the first chamber is up here uh, and that's when you blow in this the air in this chamber is turbulent the air will come out of this first hole here at the top and through the use of either this brass spacer and the totem or in the case of a woodland flute the air channel is carved into the body of the flute itself you will have the turbulent air coming out of this hole and through the use of the totem will come out on the this hole is called the true sound edge this this edge right here and it will come as a flat sheet of air no turbulence so it's kind of like uh, an organ a pipe organ uh, it's, it's sort of the same system so you never have to worry about having to learn to do something like the silver flute where you have to stretch your lips and and learn how to create a sound with your lips okay so let's go back to this once you have figured out where to place the flute on your lip you're going to want to learn to make sounds you're going to want to make sure that all of the holes are covered and you need to do this not with the tip of your fingers but with the fat part of your finger, the, the pad. Okay, so we, we basically play flat fingered. Okay. Now some people find it easy enough to cover all the holes and create a good sound with that. For some people that's a little more difficult, in which case I will counsel you to start with just covering one hole at a time. Once you have a 
nice clean sound, you can go down to the next hole. couple of things about how you're going to want to hold the flute. You do not want to hold the flute next to your body with your arms tied in. Okay, That requires you to dip your head. The, the flow of air is not coming, it is not going to come out clean and you're going to get tired very easily. You want to sit fairly straight or stand up and you want to hold the flute out in front of you with your arms loose but kind of away from your body a little bit to create a little space make sure that your chest can expand and compress Okay. if you hear any squeaking sounds like so that usually means that you're either blowing too hard or one of the holes is not completely covered uh, which is the reason why at first you're going to need to do this exercise just up and down the scale and make sure that you develop what's called muscle memory eventually if you've played an instrument you already know about this if you haven't uh, it's basically you're training your fingers to be in a certain position and remember that position Once you've done that, you can do a couple of fingers at a time, perhaps. I'll have to excuse my dog, she's trained to sing when I play. Um, so, sit straight, the flute slightly in front of you elbows nice and loose and a little bit away from your body and you neither need to play uh, to blow too softly or too hard you need to figure that out for your own um, all flutes are going to be slightly different in the amount of air that they require so if you blow too hard you'll, you'll end up jumping to the next octave or having some squeaking if you blow too softly you'll end up with some whistling and, and strange sounds. Okay, Okay. so we've talked about this. Um, let's talk about the six-hole flute. This one.